So now we're going to try something a little more complicated and we're going to create a 3D cube kind of look and make it a really neat background pattern. So this is kind of the cube look that we're going to go for with kind of the diagonal lines on one panel. So I'm going to grab my, once again, polygon tool and I'm going to flip it or rotate it 90 degrees. And I want to make sure the left side, so this left side, matches up with the grid on the right side. The top and bottom don't matter right now. So I'm going to uh, grab my pen tool and I'm just going to sketch out my 3D cube. So it looks like I'm almost making a diamond. But you notice that's the top of my cube and these are the left and right sides of my cube. So I'm just making a couple of boxes to make our shape. Perfect, so we just made a 3D cube just like that. So now I wanna to try to add some kind of effect to one of these panels. So I decided to go with kind of diagonal lines because I haven't seen that yet. So um, a, a quick way to do that is I'm gonna draw a line using the grid tool, just like that. And I'm gonna copy and paste, I'm gonna make it a little skinnier. I'm just gonna copy and paste on each row till I get probably about 15 or so. So once I get three, I can copy and paste, speed it up, speed it up. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to use our align tool to make sure they're all lined up. That's probably good enough. I'm going to go ahead and select just this. Great. So we're going to make sure these are all lined up with our align tool. I'm going to go up top or I can bring up my align tool by going to window. And I'm going to align them all to the top. And I want to make sure they're evenly distributed so uh, the space here is the same as the space here. So I'm going to click on Horizontal Distribute Center. And so now I know there's equal spacing between the lines. So I'm grouping these guys together. And this is how I'm going to apply it to just that one panel. I'm going to make it tall. Get the angle I like, which will probably be maybe from this corner down to this corner. Make sure we're staying precise. So you notice how this line hits this right angle and comes up and hits that right, right angle. That's perfect. I might want to make this just ever so slightly bigger, maybe 1.5. So I'm going to adjust the thickness, make sure it's the right amount. So I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all my elements are selected. To go over here to my shape builder tool and I'm going to hold down option key and I believe it's the alt key if you're on a windows and I'm just going to subtract so all these elements I don't need and leave this panel with the, the, the diagonal lines. So I'm actually going to go back and make it easier on myself and only have the lines extend to where I need them to be. Okay now I'm going to grab that shape builder tool hold down option key get that minus sign and I'm just going to subtract the little elements we don't need. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oops, I might need to select those individually. I don't want to select that top box to delete that. Oops. I've got to wait till I get that um, red line. There we go. Just shaving everything, all the excess stuff. I think there's one right there. Perfect. So there's my cube and we'll be ready to make a pattern out of it next. So we can simply take this shape, we can group it, I already have it grouped, and we can make a seamless pattern out of it. But I think I'm going to do something a little bit more unique and interesting. But I wanted to show you really quickly how you did, how you can make a seamless pattern out of this shape, just in case you're interested. So you go down to Object, Pattern, and Make. And you'll be able to kind of adjust certain patterns. Um, so let's do a 9x9. Nine nine. You could do a couple different arrangements that look pretty cool, just depending on the look you're wanting to go for. And that one's neat because it creates triangles within the squares or within the cubes. So that's kind of neat. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on Grid. So do Done up here at the top, and then now our pattern is saved. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And I'm going to create a square. Go ahead and load my pattern in. And there's our little seamless pattern. But we're going to do something different. So let's go ahead and delete that. I have all this junk over here. Let's go ahead and delete all that too. Do, 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 do. We no longer need the grid for what we're doing, so we're going to hide grid. It's getting in the way. Okay, so let me zoom back in. And we're just going to manually create our pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and select all. It's already grouped. Um, if I ever want to change my pattern, I'm going to need to outline stroke uh, because it's going to, the thickness is going to change when I make it smaller and it's also going to get thinner if I make it bigger. Let's go to path. Let's outline those strokes. Perfect. Now I'm ready to go. I can make it smaller without the lines or the stroke getting thicker on me. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to zoom in here for these first couple ones. Make sure I have it pretty precise. Although it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't want to be a computer. We want to create something that's unique. But it helps to not have too much overlapping elements. So let's zoom out to 300 now. Now that I have four boxes, I can group those together. Copy and paste. Let me ungroup those. I want to keep them ungrouped just because. Just in case I need to edit them individually later. I'm just manually creating my little pattern. Copying, paste, copying, and pasting. Overlaying. Zoom out, keep doing it. And you'll see why we're doing this manually. I think we can have a little bit more control over our design a little bit when we start to experiment with different options for our pattern. Kind of see our little cool pattern coming together. And we can even group larger elements. Zoom out 100%. This is where we can be a little more creative. We don't have to have the pattern be perfect all the way. We can have it maybe intersect here. So you notice how I did that. Let me zoom in. Notice how I have them almost coming together. I could do that again down here. Maybe they're almost coming together. And each time I do this, each time I practice this, it always has a different and unique pattern to it. Just never know which way, which way I'm going to do it. So maybe that. Maybe up here they come together in a different way, but they don't quite touch. Or maybe they do touch, but maybe only in two spots. Or maybe just barely touching on that side. Let me line it up. Looks better to the eye when they, they're lined up like that. Let's zoom out. Let's actually apply our background texture to this. So I'm going to grab this color. Go ahead and expand this out. As far as we want, we can make this a horizontal instead of a portrait. Just kind of going with the flow. So you can kind of see our pattern coming together here. We can even copy and paste another little element. Have it come over here. Have something over here. I'm just going to draw a couple of quick boxes. Just so I don't get distracted by everything outside of the artboard. There we go. I like that a lot. It's coming together. So I want to screen all this back, uh, reduce the opacity on all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and drag, select them all, 
unselect my little borders I just created and unselect my background. Perfect. And I'm going to reduce, instead of reducing the opacity, I think I might just make it a darker gray color. And let me group them all like that. I want something in between these two swatches, so I'm just going to do it by hand. Make it a little darker. Or I could just take the eyedropper tool and sample my background gray and make it lighter that way. Ooh, that's perfect contrast. So let's bring my little white borders out. Let's say we want to add a little gold flare. So let's kind of select a random box and make it gold. So I'm just going to grab one and apply a gold gradient. Maybe one that's a little bit more of a copper color. And I'm going to bring this to the front. And I'm going to make that gradient a little more smooth. So I'm going to do a long stretch. Maybe not quite as long. Perfect. So now I'm going to do this randomly throughout the piece. I don't know if I'm going to like this, but I'm just trying new things to find out what works. I need to ungroup all these. Might be better just to select all and ungroup. So now I can kind of select one at random. I don't want to select too many. I want to bring it to the front so it's at the top layer. Go ahead and do a long gradient. Perfect. This adds a little spice, something a little different to the pattern. Maybe grab that one, maybe this top one, maybe one up top, and maybe one at the bottom. Let me make sure those are on the top layer. Go to right click, bring to front. See, if we made a seamless pattern, we wouldn't be able to do all these custom things to our background. So that's why I like to do it manually. It takes a little while to set everything up perfectly, but you have more control over your design to add unique elements just like this. We could even do one next to each other. So I'm just gonna play around and experiment with this and see what I come up with.